Well, um, say hello to the uh, ninth and 10th seed because that's what we're looking at right now. Um, that's the second time this year, Rhino, that the Kings have had the Suns completely wrapped up, strangled, and boom, before you know it, they lose the game, right? How, so, how, how does that happen, Rhino? Grant, off the air, we, we both said to each other, <laughs> we're like shaking our heads, like, how does this happen? Yeah, I don't know, Grant. It's the story of the season, another game that's a microcosm of the season between the Kings tightening up when the game got close. You've got some injuries to watch for, turning the ball over. What else do you want? I mean, this is going to be the therapy offices of Napier and uh, Ryan and Sacktown for the next hour, probably. And I don't want to hear about the officiating tonight. All right. I don't want to hear no, about it. Because, no. Because you know what? They let the guys play at the end of the game. It was very physical, Ryan. Very physical. You know, you can go back and forth and you can nitpick a call, but that's not why the Kings lost. There were a couple of sequences that just I did not understand. Sure. The Kings go got an offensive rebound. Keegan Murray took a three with a size of what was the Kings were up four. Yes. He takes a three with like 22 seconds on the clock. The ball ricochets out of bounds. Fortunately, Grayson the Kings, they went off Phoenix. Yep. The Kings inbound. Boom. They turn it over. Phoenix runs down, layup, two-point game. But what the hell is Keegan Murray doing there? You, the, 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 I mean, use the freaking clock. You're up four. You just got an offensive rebound. Why are you rushing a three there? Fortunately, the Kings got the ball and inbounded, and then they turned it over. But little things like that, I don't understand. Yeah, Grant, either do I. And I could point to some more things like that throughout the fourth quarter, a little bit in the third quarter. Um, you know, Phoenix went on a run where they hit seven field goals in a row at the end of the third and into the fourth, unfortunately. And that was a really tough thing for them. But I think, Grant, the Kings just at the end of the day, the lack of offensive sets. Mike Brown has not been shy about saying we are a free flowing offense. This is a consequence of being a free flowing offense. Everybody, listen, I don't have a problem with Fox having the ball at the end of the game to win the game. No. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Phoenix came up with the defensive play. All right, I know a lot of people are going to kill Fox for that last play. I have no issue with that, with Fox having the ball in that situation. Do you? No, not at all. That's I would have had an issue if the ball was not in Fox's hand in that situation. Yeah, good point. Well, um, wow. I mean, that's all you can say is wow. I, I don't know what else to say to this game. Well, you, you know, know I do, Grant. I have something to say to this game because we always say when we talk about the Lakers, they have LeBron James, they have Anthony Davis. We now talk about the uh, Warriors, Steph Curry. You talk about the Suns, Bradley Beal, Sasso, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, big guys. They're superstars. They have them. So when I say the Kings have De'Aaron Fox, what do you say? Um... I say he's a very good player, but he's not to the Shea Gilgis Alexander level. He's not to that level. You know what I mean? Like he's not, yeah. um, I don't think he's Anthony Edwards level. Um, you know, I'm going to try to, I'm trying to go with a couple of players that are in his generation and by his generation, sure. I'm talking about within a couple of years of when he was born and he's not to that tier and the reason why I say that is he doesn't do it enough. No. Uh, well, he did last year. He was the clutch player of the year, right? And then he gets injured in the playoffs, whether that hurts their run or not. But I don't know. I De'Aaron played a great game tonight. Other than the turnovers, he had two of the best plays back-to-back -back I have seen him make maybe in his career, and they didn't involve a shot. He got that great defensive play. And God knows how he got that ball to Keegan Murray when he was stuck in the air under the hoop with a laser and Keegan hits that three. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. He, let's, let's talk about the final game now because the Kings are now ninth, but with Phoenix winning, New Orleans is now has, they have to win that game at home against the Lakers. And I think they'll beat the Lakers. So that means the Kings have to beat the Suns, or excuse me, have to beat the Blazers, Blazers. on Sunday to be the, uh, the eighth seed, and then they would be at Phoenix, okay? Right? Yes. So, I mean, I, I well, Grant, we're not. Can we talk about scenarios without acknowledging that Domas Domana Sabonis? 
kind of took an awkward step in the third quarter. His ankle yep. kind of tweaked a little bit in, and then he rolled it later in the second I know it did half. Not look good. Did not it look did good. not look good. No, and that's an injury, Grant, where you're able to kind of tie your shoe tighter, keep going, and now you're going to see it. And that's why I personally was worried about Fox. Now you have the two stars of this team that could are banged up. And I, I don't know. What do you do against Portland if you don't have Domas? Well, it, it's... Here, here's what I do know. You may have seen the Kings play the last game of this season at home. You may have you, the Kings may not have any more home games this year. I good mean, thing or a bad thing? Well, I'm okay with the Kings playing on the road. I really am. Yeah, you know, change of but pace. I, but it, you know, again, I think the Lakers will lose to New Orleans on Sunday. So if the Kings win. Uh, they'll move back up to eight, which means, you know, they would have two chances then. All right. You'd be on the road at Phoenix. And if that, that, then you would have a, then you would, if you lose that game, you would host the winner of nine, 10. Well, those are the scenarios. Um, anyone in particular that you prefer? Uh, the way things are going right now, I don't think it matters, but I would much rather play the Lakers than play the Warriors, okay, because I already know the Kings can beat the Lakers. I've seen them do it four times this year. I don't want to see Steph Curry in a 48-minute winner-take-all game. I don't think the Kings would beat this Warriors team. I know that they're not nearly the team that we think of when we think of the Curry, Thompson, Green, you know, but they're still they still have Steph Curry. I'm surprised they lost tonight. You know, they got New Orleans on a second night of a back-to-back, -back, and New Orleans went in there and beat them. New Orleans good. New Orleans now, you know, they have won four in a row, and they're if they win on Sunday, that's a 50-win season for them. That's a surprising. Well, not surprising. We said if they could stay healthy, and Brandon Ingram, he's been hurt towards the end of the season, but Zion's nearly played every game. I think he's missed five names. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I listen – the Kings have now dropped seven of 10 coming down the stretch, and that's why they're ninth. How important the, is Malik Monk to this team? Well, do you think you can get Malik Monk back? Do, do you think there's any push to try to get him back if, let's say, Domas does have an ankle injury? Not for Sunday, no. No, not for Sunday, but for the play-in in general, because that's where we, the Kings I, are he, he can't play. He's not going to be able to play in a game until he gets a practice or two. Um, that that's I would think the more likely scenario would be if the Kings win the play in to come back at some point during the first round of the playoffs. I think that would be a more likely scenario. Ryan, they're not going to take a guy that has not been doing anything, no basketball activities at all, and just put him in a game. They're not going to do that. And, and yeah, listen, no, I if, I'm Malik, yeah. if I'm Malik Monk, there's no way in the world I would want that. Contract I mean, year, yeah. Are you Absolutely. kidding me? Malik Monk's got his whole future in front of him. He's got a big payday. Could you imagine? And again, I'm not a doctor, so I'm just giving you a scenario that maybe, maybe – could you imagine if he came back too early and maybe instead of an MCL it turned into an ACL? And again, I know they're different ligaments, and I, I'm, just, sure. I'm just trying to give you what I would be going through if I'm Malik Monk. I'm not taking that chance. Why would I? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm definitely not taking that chance either if I'm I mean, Malik. That's a, that's a hundred million dollar chance you're taking. A hundred percent, and you're not taking it to win a championship either. I mean, if this team was to go <laughs> on right. some type of run, <laughs> it's not Kevin. It's not Kevin Durant or you know. Uh, Clay Thompson going out there and trying to tape it up, but uh, we're going to take your guys or your guys' calls in a minute, but first got to let you know about Bennett's West side grill in Rockland located in the blue Oaks town center. Last night, I told you about brunch tonight. I'm going to tell you about happy hour. They have an amazing happy hour during the week. Go to Bennett's restaurants.com. Check it out. They've got 60 different wines by the glass. That is a lot of wine and they've got good wines. Too as well. Also, dining specials throughout the week. Go to Bennett's Restaurants. Now you can check out their other locations, two others besides this menus, uh, reservations, nice and job, buddy. so much more. Nice job. I'm impressed, nice, man. That's good. You're getting that you're getting very good. All right. So um this this final well, the month of April has gone about as badly as it can go for the Kings. So you can't you can't have a worse April than the Kings have had with that one and three road trip. 
you know, bl- getting blown out in the second half, getting screwed on a call at the end of the game at Boston, you lose by a point, uh, beating the Nets, then having a hor- horrific second half against Oklahoma City. Yes. And you come home and lose to New Orleans, who shellacked you, and then you gave away the game tonight. I'm sorry, the Kings gave away the game tonight. No other way to put it. Right? Grant, look at the stats. The Phoenix had 19 turnovers. The Kings only turned the ball over seven times tonight. I mean, everything screams win. I didn't have a huge problem with the shot selection. Did you up no. until the end? Yeah. No, I did not. Um, I did not. Hey, I want to let everyone know we got a special deal coming up uh, in auction. Yes. And uh, we are, we've got some very special items that are ancient. Okay. Uh, well, be careful what time. you say because Jerry Reynolds is involved, and they're not nearly he, as old as Jerry Reynolds. Well, I was with Jerry when the when the shirts were signed, so that would make me ancient too. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. You know what's so, funny? Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. No, no. The, I'm the just saying. Go ahead. Yeah. The saying on the back of the shirt is funny. It says, "Where the kings hold court." Yes. That is great. Right. I love it. I remember when I started doing the Kings games in '88. And we came out with those T-shirts, and it had the big hand over the ball, mm-hmm. and they had a billboard uh, uh, of the games on uh, KRBK, Channel 31, where I was the sports director. And they actually – it was like a three-dimensional billboard. It actually had the ball sticking out of the billboard with the hand over it. That That's was very so cool. cool. That's really so, – that's beyond its time, Napes. All right, so give us a little more info on this. Yes. So um, I'm quite surprised these are coming up and available, but they are so cool. We're going to be putting the auctions up before the game on Sunday. We have three shirts, all from the Jerry Reynolds show, as Grant said. Now, here's what's special about them. One of them autographed by Larry Bird and autographed by Jerry Reynolds. Another autographed by Jerry Reynolds and Wayman Tisdale, and we have another one with Jerry's autograph on there. Now, all three of those will be up for auction. We're going to leave them up through the end of the season. Each one will also come with a special, unique experience. One of the experiences will be dining at Bennett's and sitting courtside at a Stockton Kings game with myself. Another will be a force or two players at Valley High Country Club and myself and uh, one of my buddies, Eric Snyder, who's graciously donating that. And uh, the third will be some digital time and experience with Grant. Uh, You'll get to Zoom with him and just have some one-on-one time. So uh, we've done an auction before. We did that. Remember when we shaved our heads? Yep. Yep. That was a while ago. Um, But we're looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys all would like to bid in the shirts, by the way, we're going to get them framed really nicely for you. It's going to be a great setup. And if you're not in Sacramento and can't make it to experiences, we can find a way to accommodate you. All right. And then it will be on my website. Where will people go to uh, auction these off? Yes. So what we are going to do is we'll put them on Grant's website. We're going to use a third party for the auction. So there's no funny business. Absolutely. Yep. And um, we'll also every show from here on out, we will have a QR code up here for all of you where you can scan that QR code and it will take you directly to the auction. And Grant, while we're talking about it, I got to pull up the information, but I do want to give a huge thanks to Max. You Max know, has been great. Was Max been has been great. great for us. Max has done a ton for the website, helping yep. us out. Max actually owns his own di- or own business, Envision Web Designs. He does a lot of specialty things. Grant, how quick did Max get up your website and get everything going? Max is great. I, I owe him a, a gratitude of thanks and so many others, but he's great. So if you're watching now, Max, thank you very much. Uh, you're appreciated. Yes, and we are welcoming him on. Max will do a full thing for them next show, but they are a new sponsor and they'll be on for the rest of the season. New Vision Web Designs. Go check them out. We'll get the graphics and information for you next show. All right. Uh, Chris just put up a uh, a stat on the screen, and I wasn't even aware of that. I can't even find it. Kings were outscored 9-2. So the Kings only scored two points in the final 335. Is that accurate? You were charting it. I wasn't. Um, I know they didn't score a lot, but they were. They only scored two points in the final 335. How about that? 
Yep, that's correct. The Kings, their last basket was an offensive, re- yep, offensive rebound to a two, and then they go missed. They go offensive rebound, missed three turnover, turnover slash or turnover, missed two, missed two, game over. Well, uh, in turnover, obviously, it's unbelievable to me how they lost this game tonight. I mean, it really is. It is absolutely. They had the game in control, and then they didn't have the game in control. And that turnover on the inbounds, you know, where the ball went out of bounds uh, with the two players going to the floor, and I think it was off Allen, and the Kings inbound, okay? Mm -hmm. And they inbound, and within two seconds, this ball is going the other way for a layup. And a four-point game with the ball, with a chance to go up by six or seven, now all of a sudden you're only up by two. C- critical, critical mistake in the game. You cannot critical. turn the ball over in that situation. Can't do it. No, Grant, did you have any issue with Mike Brown not using that second challenge in the second half? Yes, I did. Uh, I thought there were a couple of opportunities. And, I mean, they 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 – Still had a timeout left when the game ended. They didn't use their final timeout. I'm not sure. There was, a, I believe it was a moving screen that was called that was not challenged. And I'm thinking it's a critical time. You got to look at that. And I forgive me, Grant. Maybe you can help me out. I'm not sure if the key on play where he shot the three, I would have challenged that as well. It looked like he was clearly hit at least after the follow through. I thought that was challenged. I thought they did review that. No, they didn't challenge the foul. They challenged whether or not it should be a jump ball. Oh, oh, I see. And that was a Phoenix challenge. Yeah, okay, you're right. That was. Um, I'm not so sure that was a foul. It happens. Uh, it was the ball almost hit the rim. I, here, Here's what I do know. We, we can talk about challenges, this and that. The Kings had the ball in their hands multiple times in the final two minutes and could not execute, could not get to the foul line, could not make a basket. And there were too many possessions where Jerry likes to say Jerry's favorite line that I always, a bad shot is better than no shot. Two of the final four possessions. They didn't even get a shot off inbound steal final sequence of the game. No shot. So think about that. You lose by one. And in two of your final four possessions, you don't even get a shot off. Yeah, it's a great point, Grant. And then they went through a period, too, as well, when Phoenix made their run where they almost had a shot clock violation. And again, things tightened up. And for whatever reason, are the Kings trying too hard? This is a great question. Are the Kings trying too hard to draw fouls? I can't answer that. I don't know if they're trying too hard. I know they are trying to get to the line and at times uh, maybe overdo it. But, you know, the other aspect is they've been such a poor free throw shooting team for most of the season. I'm not even so sure that's the best strategy. Uh, Yeah. 13 to 14 tonight. Not bad for the Kings. And it's just hard. It's you look at transition, right? The Kings win that fast break points, 11 to nine. You look at points off of turnovers, Grant. How often do you see a team that wins that 20 to seven, but loses the game? All right, so you have the Blazers, okay? Yes. Who are coming in. They've lost eight of ten games. And just to give you who they've lost to, their last four games, they lost to Boston on the road, 124 to 107. Mm -hmm. They lost to the Pelicans by 10 at home. They lost to the Warriors by eight at home. And they just lost to the Rockets at home, 116 to 107. And you know the Blazers would love to come in here and beat Sacramento. Grant, they right? played the they played the Kings tough all season. Yes. I mean, that's the problem. And they've really not at any point had a full team to play with, or at least their no. full complement. So you worry about it a little bit. But to me, I've mentioned the 1230 thing. It is a thing for Sacramento. Everybody plays at 1230, yep. but you combine that with it the last game. For Portland, they want to have some pride. Grant, they're NBA players. They're, they're not just going to get pushed over. Well, you know, Shaden Sharp out, Jeremy Grant out, uh, Anthony Simons out, Malcolm Brogdon out, uh, Matisse Thibel out, uh, DeAndre Ayton, uh, you know, back soreness in the last game. He's out. Mm-hmm. Walker's out. But what do we say every time a team comes in with no players? They end up beating the Kings. Oh, I, I wish they, I wish they were all playing. 
A hundred percent. I wish they were all playing. Well, I, I, I would be very surprised if the Pelicans lose at home to the Lakers. I, I'd be very surprised. The Pelicans are playing very well right now. Yep, they're on a roll, and everybody, for the most part, that's in the area where the Kings are going to be at with the play-in, they're on a decent roll. You look at their last yeah. records over 10, it's not bad. The Kings certainly have the worst record over 10 right now. Oh, boy, uh, you were right. I still think it's going to be Phoenix and Sacramento in the 7-8 uh, slot with, you know, obviously the Kings going on the road, and if they lose that game, then they'll play the winner of 9-10, which would be the Lakers and the Warriors. That's if they lose to Phoenix in Phoenix. Well, um, I, I guess it's not a surprise. I mean, we're talking like we're shocked about tonight. We've seen a collapse before. I mean, if anything, I feel like there's only sunshine from here on out as long as the Kings can get to the postseason or at least get to the play-in with at least the core of their team still intact that's there now. All right, let's get to uh, New Works Plumbing because they've got a fix for you for your plumbing needs and repairs. All you need to do is go to sacserviceplumbing.com or call the number on your screen. They're available around the clock 24-7 for all of your plumbing needs and repairs. Just go to sacserviceplumbing.com. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fix for you. Do you think, well, this may sound like a stupid question, but yeah. Because of the magnitude of tonight and what was on the line, do you think blowing the lead in the middle of the year at Phoenix, where I think the Suns, correct me if I'm wrong, went on like a, what did they outscore the Kings 23 to two or whatever the hell it was? I, but yeah. Okay. But do you think that was worse or do you think tonight's worse? No, tonight to me was way worse um, okay. because that was just a run. Tonight, the Kings executed their game plan, Grant. You know, and I know Phoenix made a run, but you look at all the stats. They shot free throws well. The Kings didn't shoot particularly bad. Second half was a little bit worse. So when we look at those landmarks where Kings win basketball games, they hit them tonight. So to me, that leaves me less hope, Names. Well, uh, it's coming down to game 82. Uh, the number one seed is up for grabs. Okay. I mean, you have Oklahoma City, Minnesota, and Denver all still alive for the number <laughs> yeah. one seed. They're all 56 and 25. How about that? I mean, how about that? I mean, unbelievable. It, is, it really is. It is truly unbelievable. So, um, wow. Sunday is going to be very interesting. Sunday is going to be very interesting. This fan base is going to be interesting. Guys, we'd love to get you in here and get your calls. We're going to go to Condog in a second. Um, cause I want to see what the fan base has to say. You know, we heard some fans. I had some fans grant on the pregame show said they weren't even going to watch the game tonight, but they were going to watch our shows. Is that because Kevin Harlan wasn't doing it? No, no. Oh, no. They should have, we should have all chipped in and had uh, Harlan stay an extra night to do this game. That would have, that, then, then that would have at least been, you know, tolerable to see the Kings lose with Kevin Harlan on the mic. At least I could have dealt with that. It was really bad tonight. I, I'll I'll go on record and say it was really bad tonight for Kings fans watching the home broadcast. Con dog, not a great night for the Kings. How you doing tonight, buddy? No, it was not a great night. But I guess the main positive I can take out of this is uh, the we weren't the defending champs losing to the Spurs and potentially giving up the one seed. It's a good point. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, the Spurs were the ones who beat the Nuggets in. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't even mention that, but yes, yeah. that's correct. Uh, so yeah, there was that. Um, but yeah, this game very sloppy in the fourth quarter for us. Uh, just you know, we played pretty good in the first half, pretty solid in the third quarter, but fourth quarter came in and opposite of last year, where fourth quarter was our time, it was not our time. <laughs> this fourth quarter. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's not like surprising. We're just, we're just missing Monk. We're just missing Monk with that energy spark. They just don't yeah. have that spark without him. No question. You, you don't. I mean, they, they his. if you don't think his value has gone up a little bit, even more than what we thought, I mean, no. he's going to get paid. The question is, who's going to pay him? He's going to get his money. Oh, yeah. He's going to be Money Monk from now on. <laughs> good one. Good one, Money, bag, Monk. money Monk. I like that. I That's a good it. one. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I hope we can pay him because uh, him and Fox seem to get along a lot. They play well together. They're great for this team. But, uh, yeah, uh, I guess next positive for me is us losing this makes the Pelicans have to actually try against the Lakers. Yep. Because my goal, my goal is to at least have that seven uh, just so we can have that buffer of an extra game in case of emergency. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate, right, appreciate the call. Right, see y'all. 82. Money Monk. Yeah. I like that. That's a good Money one. Money Monk. Monk. All yeah. right. Condog picking us up. And you yeah. called him Condog, no corn dog tonight. No, I'm I'm learning. It took You're me right. it took me a whole season, but I finally got it down <laughs> after 81 games. Yeah, the next time you do it, you're gonna have your first corn dog. Say no, him makes you love those things. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll sponsor the show. Uh, yeah, so whoever you know, the number one corn dog manufacturer will be on. Okay, what's up there, <laughs> NBA guru Zach? We'll get to you. Hey, how you guys doing? Can you guys hear me? Yep. What's going on? That was a brutal, brutal ending to the game i have a friend he texted me he's at the game he said his legs are shaking walking out of the arena uh that was insane yeah it was like what 103 96 with four and four minutes and 50 seconds left we only scored four points after that uh tough to find offense uh in the last five minutes barnes was actually the only one that made those four points i think free throws yeah. and uh another bucket so that was uh that, that was crazy to end it like that Couple bad turnovers in the end. Bradley Beal uh, stealing the ball and kind of a lazy pass. Sabonis had a tough, honestly had a tough 70, 80 seconds where he had two bad fouls and he also kind of turned the ball over on that pass. So, and actually, I don't know if you guys saw it or maybe it was just me, but I feel like he had two easy offensive rebound bunnies to put back. Two I tips know. that he could have, he, he had. Uh, There's was- something else, Zach. Zil, zilch. You got nothing. Absolutely nothing from the bench. A combined seven points from the bench. Now, Mike Brown only played eight guys. It was a short bench. But in a game of this magnitude, you only get seven points from your bench. Dapes, Phoenix only gives you 10 from the bench. It's crazy. I I know, but they didn't play last night either, which to me. But yeah, you're right. They didn't. It was a starter's game. But I just thought that I you mentioned this at half, Ryan, and I agreed with you that you thought Trey Lyles would have to get, you know, into the uh, game a little bit and get some points. He didn't score at all in the second half. Nope. Couldn't get it going. Could not get it going. Guys, I'm just going to say it. I've tippy toed around it. The Kings are lucky they didn't lose this one by 20. If Phoenix made a few wide open shots, this thing would have been blown out way earlier. I think the yeah that's true. I think Kings missed a couple easy three point shots attempts. They had some open looks. I mean they the Suns turned the ball over eighteen times. I think twelve in the first half got those steals. I, I know uh, I think Ryan's mentioned before what our record's pretty good when we get over ten steals. Ten steals. That's the number. It, Grant, think about this and think about this too, Zach. This is how Phoenix started out the game: turnover, turnover, two missed threes, and a turnover. Yeah, they, they looked a little uh, out of place. I don't know what they were doing. Uh, but, I mean, we had the game up five. Uh, man, it's tough. I, I hope the uh, the Pelicans have been uh, killing us all season. I hope they actually uh, make it up for beating the uh, Lakers on that last game. I mean, even with all of this devastation, we still have a shot in the last game to get seven or eight seed and have two shots at the playoffs. We don't have a chance to get seven seed. You have a chance to or, get I mean, eight. yeah, to be in the seventh, eighth game. Seven, really, yeah. seven, you're not, your seven's not yeah. possible now. Just to be in that, uh, to just to have two chances at the playoffs. Just give us two. Yeah, you have two chances. chances. One would be on the road if you lose that game, and then you have a home game against the winner of 9-10, which right now looks like, if well, if that's the scenario, it's not looks like it would be. It would be the winner of the Lakers-Warriors. Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope Pelicans uh, save us for once. Well, you hey, got to beat the you got to beat the Blazers first of all <laughs> before you worry about it. Well, no, I, I there's uh, you tell there's me, no you, you, are you guaranteeing to me, Zach, that the Kings are going to beat the Blazers? I, I'm putting the guarantee. I, I put the guarantee. Wow, on the line right now. That's the that's the guarantee. wait 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 wait. Are you putting the Bennett's meal on the line? You got to put the Bennett's meal on the line. So it's a what, is it going to be double or nothing? No. <laughs> no, I put something on the line. You got to put something on the line too. All right, you guaranteeing it. it? All right, I'm guaranteeing it. Bennett's on the line. Let's do this. Sunday, right. twelve thirty. Kings are lighting the beam. Kids, one eight hundred gambler. If you have an issue with gambling, <laughs> let's 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 hope for some uh, good stuff on Sunday. 
Yeah, no doubt. Hey, guys, while I got you here, Zach, uh, De'Aaron Fox after the game, quote, I got fouled, wasn't even close to the ball, uh, then followed up, when it's me, they always say they didn't see it or it's marginal contact. He's always, uh, he's been complaining about the refs. Uh, he had three guys on him at the end. <laughs> it's tough. To, they're, they're, I don't know if they're going to give it to him when they have, they have three guys at the end. Um, I don't know. It was, it was a tough, I, I didn't, I, they didn't really show any good replays from my end, at least on the last call. So, well, I'll tell you one scenario that better not happen if you're a Kings fan. All right. You, you better not have the Pelicans lose and the Suns win because guess who? You would have to play in the play tournament if you're Sacramento, if you beat the Blazers. You the would have Pelis. to play called the New Orleans Pelicans, okay? And I don't know about you, but that is not what you want. So, you know, we keep on talking about all these different seeds. Phoenix would have to go in and win at Minnesota, which I don't think is likely. And New Orleans would have to lose at home to the Lakers, which I don't think is likely. But if those two things were to happen, Phoenix – would be six and new Orleans would be seven. And that means that the Kings beat the Blazers. Then they'd have to get on a three hour flight and go play a team that kicks their ass every time that they meet. So that, you know, there are all kinds of possibilities here with one game left. I know. Uh, Cause Ryan said for when, if the Kings play the Lakers and they're playing, it would be tough for the Kings to win five times in a row. But, no. but how about six times for the oh. Pelicans? No, you know what? I've never, bought, wow. I've never bought into that. If a team is better than you, they should beat you every time. Like, I think the Kings would lose 10 games out of 10 games to Boston. Why? Because the Celtics are a much better team. New Orleans is a better team than Sacramento. They're East Coast. It's a, it's inner, it, it's the Lakers. You know them too well, Grant. You don't, yes. you don't think that makes a difference? Yeah, I think it, um, I think the, I don't want to say the mystique, the legendary status of LeBron James. But but it, let, let's just stick to New Orleans for a minute. Yeah. New Orleans is better than Sacramento for a couple of reasons. First of all, they have better players, in my opinion, from top to bottom. But the matchups we talk about so often, it is the it is a horrible matchup for Sacramento. Whereas even though the Lakers have Anthony Davis and LeBron James and a D'Angelo Russell who's hit or miss, the yeah. matchups favor Sacramento against the Lakers, but they, they we've already seen in five games. They, see, here's the difference. The Kings have been – the Lakers have at least been competitive against the Kings in some of those get losses. The Kings weren't competitive in even one game out of five against New Orleans this year. Yeah. Not once. Yeah, I can't I can't argue that. They, they've, they've gotten killed by the Pelicans all season. I don't – I mean that we wouldn't be favored at all. Obviously, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Zach, I can't see them losing at home to the Lakers. I really can't. Yeah, uh, crazy. We'll see. I mean, hopefully, yeah. I mean, hope we'll see what happens on Sunday. Well, we'll we got a Bennett's on the line. We got Bennett's on the line. Hey, Zach, thanks for the call, buddy. Appreciate it, guys. Zach, take care. Appreciate you, man. Hey, before we get to some other calls, I want to tell you about Fosters and Paws. They are a group of passionate animal advocates. They work primarily with dogs and shelters. They're looking for donors, fosters. Uh, they're looking for you to adopt a pet. And right now they have puppies available for adoption. So all you need to do is go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. They do great work. Uh, they, they're tremendous with young people. Teach them the lifelong benefits of having a pet. Just go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt and get yourself a puppy. may make you feel better after the last 24 hours of back-to-back -back losses. <laughs> it will make you feel better, as long as it doesn't shed. That wouldn't make me feel better. Well, then, you might then be don't sneezing. get a dog that sheds, you know? Some nope. dogs shed, some don't, you know? Na you know? Na get, get what you yeah. like. I hear you. I hear you, my friend. We are uh, we have not seen this guy for a while. Good to see him. Chang, welcome to the show. We are on with Grant. Hey, Grant, Ryan. How are you guys doing? How are you? Been better. Uh, yeah, same. Yeah, I think we all feel the same. I think these, I don't know, these past games definitely got everyone feeling down and they're still Kings basketball, but it just, I'm pretty sure the fan base, they're just looking forward to the next season already. You know, I, I think even if we win the play-ins, I think no one really has expectations of them doing well in the playoffs, maybe win one or two games, but that's pretty much it, you know? Um, and I guess I'm just kind of curious for, for both of you. Kind of going forward, you know, it seems, you know, I think the team's made this clear that the core seems to be Fox, Monk, Sabonis, and Murray. I guess, do you feel that we're maybe 
maybe a move away to go from good to great or has these this season really just made you go we're still pretty far from even being a great team and i guess my definition of a great team is being a top four team in the western conference napes let me take this really quick yep. i i can say it in three sentences mike bibby tonight was asked about when he came to the kings he said well my agent said everything's pretty solid and in place I just have to do what I do and I'll fit in perfectly. Everything is not solid in place for this team right now to bring in another piece. They've got to get these pieces right first. Yeah. Very well said. I think you're spot on. I guess is it concerning if, you know, um, if next year, again, we may be around a play in team. Is that just too much of this team not succeeding or is it realistically? Because I guess my expectation is that. I'm okay with Mon what Monty did this year. I'm okay with what Mike Brown did this year. My assessment of this team, why they've been so inconsistent, I just feel it's just a lack of talent. I just feel like we're not as talented as we well, thought we were. Um, from like without even year. without even knowing what possible moves could be made in the off season, um, right now I confidently can say that I'm looking at the rosters, the nucleus of the rosters, the youth. The Thunder, the Timberwolves, the Nuggets, and the Mavericks, the Pelicans are all better than Sacramento before next year even starts, okay? The Warriors are going downhill. The Lakers are going downhill. The Suns are not going to be the team. But then you have Houston who's up and coming, and you have a San Antonio team. They're not very far away from being right in the mix of a play off team and a play into they're right on the bubble that that's how much they've improved with Victor Wembanyama and then you have Memphis who was completely depleted by injuries this year and if they get all their players back they could be right there so the the west doesn't get the, the, <laughs> it's no picnic you know it's no, no picnic no i don't think it, here's what i will say about that and you're absolutely right i don't think the kings are that far off i think the variable we're not taking into account is we saw kind of for the first half of the season, a team that was trying to do the same offensive stuff. And then the second half of the season, we saw what we kind of think Mike Brown always wanted to do that was this team defensively. Now the big question becomes, and I did a podcast on this almost a month and a half ago. Can the Kings, do they have the personnel to be able to play physical, physical basketball and stay healthy right now? I say they don't. It's uh, yeah. No, I think, you know, I've been listening to you Ryan, and Ryan and I agree. I feel like, I don't know, it seems so weird because pre, you know, I would say All-Star, we were an offensive team. Post-All-Star, it seemed this team wanted to be a more defensive identity. And I would hope they can kind of, you know, combine the two. But it seems that if one night we're good offensively, we're not good defensively. If we're good defensively, we're not good offensively. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of concerning that to me to the point where it's to the point where I don't think we have the personnel to really play the style Mike Brown wants. and. I'm hoping we're really told to get that style, but even for me, because Mike Brown likes to say he wants to play with pace and physicality. And when I think about the core of Fox, Sabonis, Monk, and Murray, sometimes I feel like, does that style really match them? Uh, I'm still kind of, you know, questioning if that style really, I don't know, you know, it's going to be conducive of winning if those four play that style, because I still feel like those four guys, it seems... I don't know. It, it, I still don't know what style they would want to play because if I'm being honest, when I look at Fox and Sabonis, they played, you know, two and a half seasons together now. And I sometimes still feel like they don't have the best chemistry together where I feel like Monk has great chemistry with Fox and Monk has great chemistry with Sabonis. But I don't know. It seems like Fox and Sabonis just doesn't have the chemistry I would want them to have two and a half years into this, you know, I would say partnership. Well, whatever whatever needs to happen once this season is over, uh, Monty McNair is going to have to figure it out. This Kings team, to me, is very soft. They're going to have to get much more physical down low. Um, we talk about it all the time. I think that's an issue. They have to figure out what they want to do with the two guard. You know, is Kevin Herter? You know, where does Ellis fit in? Or because you know, if you don't keep Malik Monk, then all of a sudden you got to go out and go shopping. All right, you 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 must go out and get yourself a legitimate scorer because Monk won't be there anymore. So, you know, that's first and foremost. Can you keep Monk? If you can't keep him, then you got to go shopping. 
I, I don't know. I, I really think that next season is really on the line if we don't get Monk because I think Monk just does so much for this team. He's really the backup, you know, playmaker and the other scorer. And, you know, it's just crazy I think, how much he does for this team. And I think we're just seeing it now in these past games that he's missed. And I don't know if you can replicate that, even just getting another score, you know, because it's really his playmaking that's also, uh, that's so, I don't know, it takes this team to the next level. And his chemistry with Fox is a bonus. So I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping we keep Monk. But, you know, again, it's going to be up to him, I'm assuming, because I'm assuming the Kings are going to offer him the most. Uh, I would hope they would do that, but we'll see. You know what? We'll, we'll see. see. Thank you very much for the call. We uh, greatly appreciate when you take the time to call the show. Hey, before we move on, I want to talk to you about Gold Country uh, Veterinarian Hospital. They are located in Auburn. They serve the Foothills, Roseville, and the greater Sacramento area. They are a full service veterinarian hospital. Uh, they are dedicated to urgent care. So when your pet needs to be seen, they are available. They have advanced internal medicine, CAT scan, ultrasound, uh, diabetic management, uh, management of chronic diseases. They are a full surgical care. They have the most modern technology. They're very proud of their pain management protocols, which maximizes faster recovery for their surgical and dental patients. That is Gold Country Veterinary and Hospital. And again, the key here, folks, is when your pet needs to be seen, they are are available well it's available always one game left and uh, there's a lot on the line for almost every single team in the west other you know if you're not the clippers or the mavericks okay mm -hmm. right i mean it, or the warriors really but if the other than the clippers and the mavericks everyone's got something to play for on sunday which is great for the nba it, it really yeah, is it, it's worked yeah. out well so unfortunately um, you're going unfortunately you're going head to head with the final round of the masters which oh, is not I ideal i know i know Ugh, you've been to all man corner how beautiful i went on thursday a couple of years ago and so you're not allowed to bring any phones in. You have to check them before you go yeah. in. Um, if I could go, if I had my choice, I'd rather go to a practice round where you can bring your phone in and take pictures of the golf course. But being at Amen Corner and sitting there is magical. And I was there on a day where there was not a cloud on the sky, mm. very little breeze. It was cool. It was in the high 60s. But... I can't even begin to tell you what it's like to walk that golf course. The, I first got there. The first thing I did was walk all 18 holes. And then after that, I went right to Amen Corner and sat there for about an hour. Um, I probably ended up walking 15 miles that day because I just kept on going and going and yeah. going. Because yeah. The beauty of the course. You, what you don't understand is the elevation of that course. It's a, it's a very – that's why people keep on talking about Tiger because – it's a very difficult course to walk. There's a lot of hills and there's a lot of down and up and go down and go up. I mean, it's a very, it uh, doesn't look as much on, on TV, but it's, 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 a, it's, it's, uh, I'm having trouble putting into words. It's one of the great days I've ever spent in my life. I love that. It just seems so simple. It's beautiful. You had a beautiful day. Food's cheap. It's simple there. It's just golf. Love it. Um, Let's, I have a question for you. Beamer, Beams, or Beamly. That's your screen name. I like it, by the way. We're going to get to your comment in a second. But first, Zach, what's going on? Welcome in with Grant Napier. Hey, uh, what a kind of a di disaster of a season, honestly. Like, I was expecting more. I know it's not officially over, but like I'm just saying, as far as the regular season, win total. Hello. I uh, I mean you, did, yeah. I don't even know wh wh so why do you ask that if you don't mind me saying so? I mean I was just or maybe not the, I don't necessarily the win total just like the whole um energy from the team this year. It just never seemed like they could ever get in any kind of rhythm through like, you know, a 2-3 week period. It's just very, you know, stagnant and I was like looking at the schedule. I think the last time they had like a four game winning streak was like mid to late January or something. And then other than that, it's just been like win two, lose two, win one, lose two, you know? I just think, and I've been saying this for months, 
about the inconsistency of this team and how I have no confidence that they're going to be able to do anything, assuming they get into the playoffs. And that's why you play the regular season. Their regular season has been very Jekyll and Hyde, not only mm -hmm. from game to game, but quarter to quarter. And their point differential has not been very good. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, it's only uh, plus 1.3, which that's there's only one better. team. There's only one team in the top 10 or even the top of the top 10 that's worse. And that's the Lakers. Everyone else is above that by at least a point. And the, the team, the team's just, it is what it is. A lot of Kings fans like yourself, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. You keep, you keep expecting to wake up and the team to be different. The team, you're not going to wake up and the team's going to be different. This is who they are. They've shown who they are since the game that started back in October. Nothing's changed. Yeah. Maybe their style of play has changed a little bit, but the results haven't changed. Their inconsistency hasn't changed. So maybe stylistically it's changed, but the results haven't changed. It's all the same. And, you know, like last season was actually kind of just like a gift to the Sacramento Kings with all the injuries in the West. And so like this year, obviously there was much less injuries. Wind tolls were all up. So if you thought that this season was tough, I mean, look at next season. Like well, next season is going to be insane. Zach, let's be fair, though. The NBA changed the rules. There's the 65 game rule now. So that is it, it affects some players money. So that affects the playing time as well. That makes sense. And hey, I just had a quick question. Uh, yes. Like, and honestly, like, other than when Katie Christensen says stuff like, oh, the team's struggling because it's the holiday season, what actually makes Mark Jones and Katie Christensen bad announcers? Because I, I can't really, like, figure it out as a fan. Well, I, I'm going to let Ryan answer this because I haven't watched them do one game together. But I will tell you that every time they do a game, I get messages from people I know and people that I don't know that tell me that the games are unwatchable and that it's horrible. And I my, both on my social media account, my DMs, uh, emails that come in to G Napier at Gmail, every game. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. Every single game, I get messages galore on how awful the Kings telecast are. But I, and I'm, Listen, I'll take a lie detector test if you want me to. I haven't, watched, I haven't watched one possession with the sound on of one game of the announcers for the Kings since I left. Now, I, haven't, I, I have not heard their voices for one, one possession, so I can't answer that. Nate, I, I'll take a stab, but I want to ask you this first. How did you handle criticism during your career? If you got, uh, got a tweet sure. from somebody that said, hey, you had bad game, Napes. Uh, early in my career, before social media, when I heard it, it bothered me. But then after you're in the business for a while, you just understand that whether you're Joe Buck or you're Jim Nance or Ian Eagle, Mike Breen, or you're Grant Napier, there are going to be people that criticize your work and don't like you. And if you can't handle it, then you're in the wrong business. So I've always gone by these two simple rules. Here's what's most important, okay? That the people that pay me think that I do a good job. That was always my number one goal was that the people that pay me think that I do a good job and are happy with the job that I do. That was what I always wanted to accomplish. And then after that, you always want the fans to like you more than not like you, but I can't control that. I never could control what the fans think. So I didn't really worry about it. I just always assumed if I was getting a new contract every year or every three years, which I did for five decades, that I was doing something right. Nice. It's just well, like I, when, I filled, when I filled in for Romy the first yeah, time. Totally. Okay, well, totally. if they don't – listen. Craig's so not calling who, you back. Yeah. Who was I trying to appease when I went and did that show? I'll tell you exactly who. One guy. Craig Kitchen yep. and the second guy, Jim Rome. Craig Kitchen is the executive producer. I wanted them to go, oh, wow, okay, this guy's good. Let's have him back, okay? And I went back for, what, 17 years. That's what's important to me. The people that hire you to do the job, I always wanted to make them happy and go, wow, we made the right choice here. That's what my goal was throughout my whole career. Amen. You know, Romy always tells me, give me an A or give me an F. You always yes. gave him an A when you were in the jungle, Napes. The Kings, they've given us an F. But I think this is important, so I will take a stab at it. 
and I'll be transparent with you. Look, all of us are lying to ourselves. If we're saying that anybody that sits down in those two seats isn't behind the eight ball for one simple reason. They're not Grant Napier and they're not Jerry Reynolds. You guys had filet mignon for many, many years. And now you're getting what a lot of the rest of the NBA gets. Now, set that aside. Mark Jones, I, I will be transparent. I asked a question online about his style. I ask a lot of announcers about their style, Napes. I'm trying to get into this business. He blocked me. So if you want to talk about the energy with the Kings being off, the energy with the broadcast when it's Mark Jones and Katie is off. Katie, I don't have a problem with her. She's trying hard. She doesn't have anybody holding her hand through this. And quite frankly, Mark Jones steps all over her and has an agenda when he calls a game. He, he has certain lines that have to be said. And it's almost like he's not calling a game. He's looking for opportunities to get his taglines in. Well, I'll answer the question this way. Before I left Sacramento, whenever Mark Jones came on as a football announcer or a basketball announcer, when I turned on a game and I had no idea and I saw Mark Jones, I went, oh, God, no. Awful. Did you I, hear what I, he I said? Did I don't you hear understand what he how he's ever made it to a professional broadcaster. I think the guy's terrible. But that was, and, and I'm not, people go, gee, Grant, you're, no, it hasn't, I will, I felt this before I left the the Kings. I think he's just not a very good announcer, period. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, you can go look up clips on YouTube or wherever. I, yeah, I, I'm with you. And I think he steps on Katie. And unfortunately, that's well, the product that you get. I've heard so. Katie talks too much. So as a play by play announcer, and Jerry was always good at this, um, you need to know when to stop talking. And, Katie. My my timeline blows up with Katie never stops, never stops talking, never stops talking. I've been very open about this. If I had one hour with Katie um, with a couple of tape machines and a big monitor, I, I know I could. No, uh, and I'm not, I could make her a better broadcaster in one hour. And I believe there's that. nobody in that building and there's nobody at NBC Sports California that knows anything about broadcasting. They know nothing. I could sit with her and I mean this for an hour and go, Katie, listen. This is going to be open forum. I may say some things that you don't like. You can say some things to me that maybe I disagree with, but I'm going to point out some things and I'm going to tell you why this is good and why it's not good. And I want you to respect what I have to say because I've been studying this my whole life ever since I was in third grade. I've been studying broadcasters. Doesn't make me perfect. Doesn't make me a know-all, but I really feel that I can help out broadcasters. I help out young broadcasters all the time. They send me their work. And I give them pointers and things. And I it's amazing when they send back and go, wow, I didn't even think about that or whatever. You know, again, I'm not, God, I'm not perfect, you know, but I think I know what I'm talking about. No, you absolutely do. And quite frankly, too, Katie, I sometimes you don't know if she's going to get a chance to talk again. I think that's why she goes long. But Grant, you put that tree out there for many people. And that's the truth. And I think, too, the last thing I'm going to say about this. Katie doesn't have a consistent partner. So let's leave that alone. Um, Baki, we're going to get to you in one second. But first, we're going to bring up BJ Sal. What's up, man? Good evening tonight. Hey, how's I'm it going? Napier. How are you? How's it going? I'm doing good. How about you guys? Can you hear me okay? Got you. Yes, perfect. thank you. Excellent. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm an old king's head and used to get tickets to uh, the tin can to see the other players play and went to Arco several times. And uh, I really loved uh, uh, Napes. I really got close with him. I met him at a, at a Wood Creek game. My son was playing his son when they were younger. And I just kind of followed, uh, became a Kings fan early on about 89, 90. And, <clears throat> and I played basketball up to a higher level also. And, you know, one thing that I notice about this team and this is as as fans, we're fanatics. And I think people forget. I wrote a couple things down that, you know, our our expectations were very high, which kind of makes it um, I, I understand that. But there's just some intangibles to a team that needs to come across consistently for uh, some type of identity and a culture of a team, the way you approach the game. Um, just right off the top of my head when I when I watch the end of this game, you know, you need to have a play 
uh, you know, in the half court set that you need to be able to score at least or get a foul. When they they let that play articulate enough until they fouled, they knew that uh, Fox was going to have the ball. Everybody knew that. Yeah. They let him make his move, and then they fouled him. And then when you see all the other players, they're like, okay, we're going to need to double team him or even triple team him. That At that point, using the timeout and saying, okay, they're going to let you make your first move. Then you're going to be double teamed or triple teamed. That's kind of a coaching thing, but it comes with – the process of understanding the game. Now they're professionals and I'm not saying that they don't understand the game. I just think that there's an inconsistency in the mindset uh, certain times. Now everybody's going to screw up in a game. It's just when do you screw up? Go right, ahead, I'm going I'm I'm to add one thing here because you bring up a good point. In almost every game that you watch, before the ball is inbounded on a final possession, you know who's going to get the ball because it goes to your best player. If you turn on the Warriors, the ball's going to Steph Curry. If you turn on the Thunder, the ball's going to SGA. If you turn on the Suns, the ball's going to Kevin Durant, right? So we we all know, the 17,000 people in the building know, all of the Phoenix Suns players know that the ball's going to Fox and it's going to be his game. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't pass the ball when there's 6.8 seconds left. But every team, Brunson for the Knicks, we can go on and on. Every Anthony Edwards, Minnesota, you know who's getting the ball before the ball's inbounded. So it's not like a surprise. Would you agree with that? I, I would I would agree. So I agree with you 100%. I, I, I think where where there's a dissidence and a, and, a, and a gap with the team is that they should know that they know that Fox is going to get the ball. So you yeah. got to start to play chess. And that's where there's a process in the mindset of approaching the game. First off, being aggressive. If Malik and Monk's having on the floor, if Malik Monk's on the floor, I'm okay. But who? But let me ask you, who else in that situation do you want having the final shot? I, I, you know, I'm not upset that Fox had the ball. I think he should have the ball because it's going to draw people to him. But, yes. he, you know, he should maybe be brief like, hey, you're going to be doubled, maybe triple team. Be ready to dish it off. Be ready to give it up. But, I mean, it's a bang-bang play. Those things happen. I, For me, it's like I feel like we're, um, you know, I'm a big Harrison Barnes fan when he shows up. I'm a big, aggressive 80s type, early 90s type of um, basketball it. fan. So for me, it's like I wish we had Ron Artest in his heyday. We need an enforcer, defensive guy that's willing to step up and play that type of defense. And that brings a culture and an identity to a team that you know that you're going to. That's what you're going to do. I think we're inconsistent in – the way that we approach the game and we can blame the general manager, the, the, uh, the coach, we can blame all of it. But when it comes down to it, there are intangibles that it's the small little details that up, add up to five, six, seven losses in crucial games. We can go back to games where they gave up uh, what was that one horrible game. They played the worst team in the NBA and it was just like, I can't believe this is happening. Um, and, and that is the mindset of how you approach it. You can't take a day off. You can't take a game off. Well, and I, I just think unforced, yeah. unforced errors and, and the mindset is something that we'll have to, as fans, we'll have to endure until they get to a certain point. We can have the best players in the world, but if you don't approach the game with a proper mindset, it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough season, but it's a lot better than three, four, five years ago. So I'm not Thank complaining. You. Yep. I'm not going to love you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate love you, you too, brother. You Great much. call. Great call. There's something to that. Well, about time to bring in the man from Serbia. Yeah, we we bring him in a little bit later than normal. Oh, wait, BJ, we brought you back up. Sorry. Went one too high. Baki, what's up, brother? Welcome in. Go on with BJ. I don't have too much to say. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to say something because you're on. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to ask you, uh, Grant, you confused me because you said that we can end up uh, on the road with Phoenix, with uh, New Orleans in some kind of uh, 
ending finale. How is that possible? I mean, if New Orleans loses to the Lakers at home and Phoenix beats Minnesota, Phoenix is the sixth seed, the Pelicans are the seventh seed, and if Sacramento beats Portland, they're the eighth seed. How? If Lakers if Lakers win the game, they no, are... No, no, no. I said if the if the Pelicans if the Pelicans lose, yeah, um, that means Lakers gonna win. Now you're right. You know, but uh, you know what? You got me on that. You're right. I'm wrong. You're wrong. I'm wrong. But the, you're right. I'm wrong. Thank you for correcting me. No, I, I, it, it no, wasn't I'm wrong. Going to, you, to no, get you're, you, you're right. But, but uh, because, the, it, because that would put the Lakers still one game ahead of Sacramento. So you're 100 yeah, yeah. correct. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. You're right. No problem. But but we can win against against uh, Golden State, and then that game could be possible uh, for the eighth seed. Could be. Could be. You're right. Yep. You're right. Yeah. The Lakers. If the Lakers win, they finish one game ahead of Sacramento, regardless of what the Kings do. Absolutely. The Suns can finish ahead of New Orleans with the tiebreaker, and. So, but the Phoenix Suns would have to go and beat Minnesota, and they're playing for, you know, a number one seed possibly. What? Who do you think is going to be number one in the West after Sunday? Minnesota. You think they're going to be number one? Okay. I'm going to bet on it. Okay. And you think uh, you think Denver or Oklahoma City will be two? Oklahoma. Okay. Number two, Denver number three. Okay. So. That, I like that if you're I Sacramento see. because if you if you're able to make it to the playoffs, I'd rather play Minnesota or Oklahoma City than Denver if I'm the Kings. It would be it would be great scenario if, if we can finish uh seventh and we go to play Oklahoma. That will be like a bonus for us. No On doubt. Yeah, and that would be fun to watch SGA and Fox go at it for a seven-game series. That would be fun. I don't know how that would shake out in a seven-game. That would be a tough battle. Whew. I don't. That would be a, that would be entertaining. You know, yeah. that would be a, that would be a hell of a that would be a hell of a series. After all those games uh, against uh, Phoenix, I really don't don't see any difference between playing at home or away. I agree. Playing at Arizona or California for me it's doesn't matter. 50-50 doesn't matter so one more thing uh as you said 18 eighteen thousand people know where that last ball is going but let's not forget all five players from another team also know that so yes uh, yeah the they know of, yeah the point of one basketball game is uh that more than any other moment in the game you will have more than one player guarding that clutch player like foxes so the coach can do whatever he likes in the game, in whole game, but that last possession, I don't see Mike Brown drawing anything. That's my well. The problem, confusion. yeah, no, Baki, it, it's not a, it's not a bad take. The problem is Mike Brown's been inconsistent with his message, and I think part of that's been the injuries. But they're a spray team. He's been very honest about that. We spray the ball, so if you got guys collapsing on you on the most important possession. Where does that come down? You might be onto something. What do you think, Mapes? You know, when it doesn't work, that's why we have a show, and that's why fans call radio shows and internet shows because second guessing is part of being a sports fan. It's what we do. No doubt. And when it works, uh, nobody second guesses. Everybody's happy. And when it doesn't work, we all want to blame somebody because we all think we know the answers. Uh, yep. First of all, it's not always as easy to inbound the ball to who you want. That's number one. Sometimes you can't inbound the ball to who you want. Uh, sometimes you do inbound the ball to who you want and you have a play set, but the play's not there because of what the defense is doing. So you got to react on the fly. You know, it's not just as simple as saying, okay, we're going to do this and then we're going to do that. No, it, it, you know, you've all played sports. You all know what I'm talking about. You know, you can draw up a play during a timeout and then that play is not there and you got to improvise. There are all kinds of things that go on in a game. So um, I personally don't have a problem in that situation, being able to get the ball in the Fox's hand and let him create. Yes, they collapsed on him. All right. There were two and three guys on him. But we've also seen Fox 
Who was Mr. Hero last year? Who was the guy that won all the games in the fourth quarter for Sacramento De'Aaron with Fox. players draped all over him? So I've De'Aaron seen it before. Fox. You know? The shot he made tonight, lane, uh, basically lane parallel to the ground, yes. was stupid. Yes. Yes, Stupid. in the paint, falling back, yes. like shooting the ball, looking up at the sky. Yes, it was amazing. Uh, what a play. Um, but hey, Baki, we appreciate the call, Thank buddy. You, you, you know, Napes, Thank the you, one buddy. thing. Yeah, thanks, Bok. The one thing I would say is we should probably wait for the two-minute report. How many times have we seen oh. missed call? Miss call and it's gonna it there will be some there, there will be some tomorrow. Uh make no mistake about yeah. it. Hey, Blazona development, and I want to tell you about Calusa Sunrise and Sunrise Landing. That's right. Sunrise Landing. If you go to calusasunrise.com, you can check out everything they have to offer. Six models to choose from, various different uh sizes of lots. You have no Melarus, you have no homeowners, great access to major arteries like I-5 and Highway 20. Just go to Calusa sunrise.com and check out sunrise landing that's calusa sunrise.com well coming up there are a lot of scenarios uh and i appreciate baki i i think what i was saying in my mind was if you're nine or ten and you win that game you're probably going to have to go play you know you're you're going to be on the road and you might be at new orleans so there's all kinds of scenarios yeah here's Ryan, here's the deal. Win the game on Sunday, first of all. And you made a very good point. I had not thought about this. We got to wait and see how Sabonis is. There were some bad looks for his lower extremities in the final minute of that game. Nate, so you don't usually want to see an ankle go inside when you see that. Normally, that's more of the high ankle variety. Yes. We're not and doctors. A lot, a lot depends on if how much yeah. swelling he'll have when he gets up in the morning. A hundred and ten percent. Um, we still got Dirk and J Cal. You want to knock those it. out really quick? Let's, Let's do oh, it, buddy. Let's J-Cal. do it. We're going. We're going full. We're going overtime today. Let's do it. Ot. Dirk, what is up, my friend? Whoa, what happened to our picture? Dirk, do you have lights where you live? Uh, not at eleven o'clock at night with a five-year-old. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I love that answer. I love your dedication. <laughs> that is beautiful. Hey, Dirk. I love when you Here get it right go, back Grant. to me. Hey, Dirk. This? Dirk. No, no, no. No, Dirk. You know what? You're you're awesome. What can we do for you, buddy? That's great. <laughs> what a I just got back response. from the game. And I just got back from oh. the game. And it was a heck of a game. I mean, I, I understand everyone's disappointment, but, man, the energy was out of this world. Um, didn't it feel like Sabonis had finally exercised some demons this game? Like, he was mm-hmm. – he showed up, right? He mm-hmm. started really slow. I was really worried, like, uh oh, he's choking again. And then he gets you 25, and it's like the end of the game comes, and there's just this play after play. And it's, uh, I was hoping he had just worked through this late game, like important game, falling apart behavior for that to happen. How did you guys feel about it? Go ahead, Rhino. Yeah, I thought he played pretty darn well. I, I thought that Phoenix is kind of a weird matchup for him sometimes with um, their guys down low, but he's had good games against them, so I was fine with it. And the way that he powered through Dirk, I mean, I don't got a problem. The guy's been a machine all year. Napes? Listen, I think Sabonis has had a tremendous year. I think it's an, uh, an, an outrage that he wasn't on the All-Star team. I think yeah. he gets a bad rap uh, at times, but... I think the guy's had just an incredible season, so it's difficult for me to get down on him. I, I I have a really difficult time criticizing him because he shows up every night. He plays the same way every night. He's really good in the locker room. You know, he's not a me-me guy. Um, I just love him. I He's a consummate professional. He really is. You know, I do too. I was actually getting into it with Carmichael Dave a bit on Twitter. Like, I don't want anybody to be above criticism on the team because I think we need Wait. to be honest about what yep. we have. Yep. And then we can fill what the needs are. Like if, I mean, I think we need a third guy, obviously. Keon Ellis, though, I feel like, Grant, he's showing me something. Uh, You're seeing some versatility there. He's not a perfect player, but what a value he is for what we have him for. I can see him like being a part of this team for the the next foreseeable future. I agree. But he's a, but he's a, he's not a starter. He's being perfect coming off the bench. Oh, love it. And, And, you know, I mean, He's not your ideal starter, but I think he's doing admirably in these situations. I mean, he—I agree. He gave, what did he give us? Sixteen tonight. 
I, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't look good on the back on the box score because he had the worst plus minus by far by yeah. anybody on the team. But listen, I think you made a good point. Whether he starts or whether he comes off the bench, to me, he's a guy that you want to keep because he he has all those intangibles that you that this team I think really needs. And he might have given you a little bit of a roadmap of what this team needs in that two guard and a starter going forward. Somebody that can be yep. that three and yep. D. And we've heard three and D so much, Dirk, in this city over the last yep. year. Yeah, I know it's late. I, just one last comment. I'm not all doom and gloom about this. Uh, these Phoenix games seem close. It, it feels like this is going to be the – I feel like we're going to end up the eight. I, I wasn't worried too much about this game one way or the other, knowing how bad, the, how good the Pelicans have been playing. I was really confident they're going to beat the Warriors. It looked like it was a closer game than it ended up being. It was sad that the Lakers just basically were given the Memphis, you know, whatever yeah. that Memphis Grizzly squad was. Apparently it was a close game. Yeah, it was very um, close. And if this team can't go into, uh, can't, well, I'm going to the Portland game on Sunday. So if they can't beat, that Portland roster, I don't care that they're the nine ten. It's like I have no won't confidence matter. in it. I just yeah, sort of want to get it over point. with. Hey, uh, you're really awesome to go to the game, yeah. come home, call, and we greatly appreciate it, Dirk. Thank you very much. Have a good night, guys. And dude, you too. Thanks, yep. Dirk. Oh, I just took Napes down. That that right, will gotta, not gotta, make me the man. We got to go back. We got to go back. We have a message uh, all the way from Serbia. Go right ahead. Sorry, guys, we didn't have so holy moly Jim Bavoli for this game, but next time we will win. And sorry because my dad did this with my teddy bear because when he eat my candy, he's a little bit of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, regardless of if the Kings win or lose, you still got to give me a good holy moly Jim Bavoli. You ready? One, two, three. Holy moly, Jim Baboli. <laughs> Love Good night it. On that note. Thank you. That was great. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this show up with one more call, and uh, we get to uh, to Joel. J Cal, I think. Oh, J hey, Cal, guys, can, I, hey guys, can you hear me? Go ahead. Uh, I was not expecting this kind of game. I mean, after from last night's game, uh, I thought it, I really thought they were gonna get blown out today, uh, tonight, but they played one. Played the hell of a game, uh, except for like the mistakes they made near the end. But I mean, as a basketball fan, we really, we really got to be like excited. Sunday is is insane. I'm looking at the standings for for the Eastern Conference and Western Conference. Yeah, it's it, gonna be fun. It yeah. is. It's crazy. How the game. Oops, sorry on, about uh, that. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm going yep. to the game on Sunday, and I, I'm definitely gonna be looking at the scoreboard for the Lakers and. Uh, Pelicans yeah. game. Yeah. Thank but, you, uh, buddy. Hey, Grant, I want to say yep. one more thing. Uh, I really do miss you and Jerry calling games. I Thank really you. do. It's different, you know? Thank it, you. It really is. I, I miss you uh, uh, criticizing uh, both teams, you know, especially <laughs> the Kings. I really do. I re it was awesome uh, hearing both sides, you know? Hey, I appreciate your kind words. Have fun at the game on Sunday, okay? Yeah, I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, Sunday comes down to a lot of scenarios, whether the Kings are going to be eight or nine, and we'll just see what happens. Ryan, been a busy day. I appreciate you. Uh, my pleasure, Napes. Thank you so much. And, you know, we got to hit the fans with a... Holy moly, Jim Baboli. <laughs> and the night off. So... <laughs> Well, so it's, always good. it's always good when you have a 24 hour period like this, when you lose the two biggest games of the year to go off the air with a smile. You got uh, it. And, you uh, got she it. just did that. We, we appreciate that because you know what? We need some smiles right now. We'll talk to you on Sunday.